This is the Blue Yeti. It's an extremely popular USB microphone. I use it for both of my podcasts, Clamp and Into the Spotlight, and it's a good microphone, but it has a very annoying design flaw. This knob on the back adjusts the gain, basically how loudly my voice comes through the microphone. And if I turn it, oh, wrong knob, it's this knob on the top. If I turn it this way, my voice gets louder. And if I turn it this way, my voice gets softer. Now I need to try to put it back to where it was before. I don't really know where the knob was. No, I can't, where was it? It was here? There's like no visual markings of where it was. It doesn't click and it's on the back of the microphone. I can't see this knob. I'm always mixing it up with the one below it. And because it's on the back of the microphone, it's extremely unintuitive. I never know which way to turn it to make it louder or quieter. I have to sort of put it a little bit in one direction and see how it changes. And since I already hear my voice through my head, it's really difficult to hear through the headphones if my voice is actually getting louder or quieter. But I think I know how to fix this. So I need some measurements off the knob. And then the depth of the knob, what is that? 0.15 inches. So I'm in Fusion 360 and I'm gonna start by inputting those dimensions as user parameters. So I'll go to modify, change parameters. First one is the knob diameter. And then we have knob depth. I'll create a cylinder that represents the knob itself. Knob diameter, knob depth. I'll add another parameter and call this one ring thickness. Try, let me see looking at this. Try 0.1 inches. So I'll create another cylinder on top of this one. Diameter will be knob diameter plus two times ring thickness to take into account both sides. And then for the height, we will make this knob depth, new body, combine, target body will be the outside, tool body will be the inside. And if we do a cut, then we're only left with a ring that goes around our knob. Now I wanna cap this off, so I'll create another cylinder, origin to the edge, and I'll just make this the ring thickness and height again. Kinda wanna make this a dome, so let's create a fillet around this top edge. That looks nice, 0.2 inches. We need a little indicator on top of this that I can feel without having to look at it so we know what the gain is set to. So I'll create a sketch on top of here, draw a construction line from the center, it doesn't need to extend past the edge, so let's just make this 0.35, offset it, ring thickness, divided by two, cap it off. Now I'll just select that profile and extrude it upwards by ring thickness. I don't think it needs to be that tall. Let's do ring thickness divided by two. And then I'll just use the extrude command to pull this into our body. Make sure that join is selected. Perfect. Maybe I'll add a fillet to this edge here or a chamfer, I think that will be good. So let's see what that looks like if we go to 3D print, bring it into our slicer. If we use 0.15 millimeter layer heights, that looks good, it looks like it will stick up enough. We do have a bridge. We'll see if we can print that with no support material. All right, I think that part of the fix is good to go. Let's head on over to the 3D printer, see how it goes. So I printed this out of TPU, which is a rubber-like 3D printing filament. And because it has some flex to it, and since we made the inside the same diameter as the knob, hopefully it grabs on with a nice tight fit. So I'll make sure I'll line up our touch indicator with the black line on the knob. Beautiful. Now I'm gonna remember that that's the right position because we haven't yet solved the knowing it's in the right spot, but let's see. Oh, beautiful. So that's our sweet spot. It's really easy to feel where that is. Now we need a scale to go around the knob. So I'll create a new sketch on the XY plane, project the base of my knob. I need to check on my microphone how much room I have. All right, I have about 0.18 inches. So I don't wanna make it any bigger than that. Offset this outwards, we'll make a bit of a gap. Let's try 0.05. And then if we offset this again, let's make it, so we're not going right up against that, 0. One, six. So one of the problems I wanna solve here is remembering where the sweet spot is on the gain knob. So I'm thinking of using pegs to mark that spot. I have a finish nail here that I'm gonna use as a peg. So I'll measure the diameter, 0 0.073 inches. I'm gonna make this slightly smaller than the actual diameter so it's a really tight fit. I don't want this accidentally falling out. So the diameter is 
0.073, I'm gonna call the nail diameter 0.07. Hopefully that will be a really snug fit. So I'll draw a line to here and then a construction line between my two circles. Now I'll create a circle in the middle, nail diameter. Perfect. Looks like there's enough room on either side. This scale doesn't have to go all the way around, so I'll draw some bounding lines, say 140 degrees. I think that's good. 180 minus 40 is 40 degrees. Now I'll take this, including my circle, and extrude that. How thick do we wanna make this? Should we just do ring thickness? Yeah, let's just make it ring thickness. I want it to be thick enough that it can support the nail. Now I'll turn my sketch on and extrude just this hole. And now I'll create a circular pattern using the extrude feature of that hole as the object. The axis will be our blue axis and we can fill this up with as many as we want. Yeah, there we go, 18. That should give us plenty of spots to put the peg. Now let's see what happens if we print that. Hopefully nothing is too small. I'm a little worried about the space between those holes and the edges, but we'll find out very shortly. Go ahead and slice. Okay, perfect. We have two perimeters between the holes and the edge. So I think we should try and print and see if it works. Let's do it. So as sometimes can happen when you 3D print really small holes, these holes turned out a bit smaller than I planned on, but they're still open. I cut off a little piece of finished nail to use as a peg, and after grinding down the tip of it, it fits in perfectly. Got a very snug fit. One of the advantages of printing with a flexible filament, even though those holes are small, we can still push our peg in. Let's attach this to the mic. Actually, if I change this to both sides, now you'll be able to hear me even though I'm on this side of the mic. Just gonna use a little bit of super glue. Get this lined up. So that's glued in place. And now we can take our peg. I believe the sweet spot was right here. Awesome, that's so good. I can feel exactly where it's supposed to go. I can just line it up by finger. This is too quiet, now I can bring it up feel when those are in line, and I know that I'm good to go. For the finishing touch, I want to add something that will tell me which way to turn the knob to make it louder and which way to make it softer. So I'll create a new sketch. I'll project the knob, offset it outwards to about there, and I'll draw a line to here, then create an arc here to here, extrude that by ring thickness, spray in a little activator, So now I can feel this way is volume up, this way is volume down, go back to the sweet spot, add my peg. There we go, perfect, that works so well. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe for more projects. And if you're interested in directly supporting this channel, I have a Patreon page, which I'll link in the description. There are some cool benefits over there, like a patron's exclusive Instagram page and end credits for my top supporters. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.